being a person of words and sentences, I was intrigued by the juxtaposition of these two words, ordered chaos. I mean, it's a lot like uh, the juxtaposition of two other words that I never imagined could exist together or be together. So any ideas on what two, that two words that can go together but are together, like ordered chaos? Pardon? Oh, that's a nice one. Yeah, that's a nice oxymoron. Any, any, any more? Happily married. Oh, well, I, I don't want to. <laughs> no, no, no. I don't want to discourage you guys so early on in life, uh, although I'm not married. But for me, those two words were clean sex. Can you for a minute imagine clean sex? I mean, what does that even mean, clean sex? And uh, it does, I mean, when I first heard these words, they, not, they, they not only sound weird, but they kind of felt weird as well, you know? Can you for a minute ponder how this is achieved, clean sex? Imagine my plight when someone told me that they have clean sex. I wanted a demo, but I was too afraid to ask them. They might have really given me one, and I'm like, no, no, I don't want that. So now you know why clean sex kind of reminded me of ordered chaos. In Greek mythology, the word chaos or cause is a primeval state of existence from which the first gods appeared. For all agnostics and atheists out there, please feel free to substitute the word uh, God with Steve Jobs algorithms, Stanley, or Me Too, or anything or anyone that perpetuates your fancy of being invincible. But seriously, some people do think the Me Too movement is God acting in mysterious ways. More power to, to them. Now going back to the definition, chaos is derived from the word chasm or void. The dictionary definition of the word ordered is carefully arranged or controlled. The dictionary definition of the word chaos is a, sta a state of utter confusion with no order. Now, how is that for a mind beep? The journey of writing a script, book, thesis, etc., is different for each person. I mean, it varies from person to person. And the time fr frame one engages in the process also differs va vastly. I know and I've heard of writers who dress up or dress down but land up at the same place, same time, every day to stare at the blank page, a blank page, doodle, or do whatever things writers of such discipline do. And it works for them, but I'm not one of those writers. And even if I wanted to be one of those writers, my life's chaos or arrangement doesn't allow it. My previous film, Angry Indian Goddesses, inexplicably changed my life. It was an extremely difficult film to write because it had seven women in the lead. Now, can you imagine that? Seven women in the lead, and each of them had to be given prominence. Angry Indian Goddesses was a dream come true, but nothing prepared me for the experience I was about to have. It was one of the first films that made women uh, uh, integral part of the narrative and uh, story in Bollywood. The director of the film didn't want any cardboard characters. He, uh, he appro he, we approached it very scientifically, though, but our approach towards the craft was nonlinear. He wanted Newton's first and second law to be adopted in the screenplay. Action, reaction. And I mean, this was very hard to achieve when you have a group of seven women. And you know, it's, it can be very arbitrary because they were in one frame at, at one time. There were no lines assigned to the character each character, actor, was fed their character over a period of three weeks at a workshop held in Goa. We had the entire story in mind. We knew what we wanted to achieve, but the dialogue and the reaction was left to the actors. It was their interpretation of their character. That has never, ever been done in cinema. In India, abroad, we were the first people to do it. And I mean, I, that itself was a very big learning curve for me. That's why I believe Angry Indian Goddesses uh, has a rawness that's unparalleled. And I also strongly believe uh, that any work of art or life itself is an archetype of ordered chaos. Now I'd like to tell you a story about my most recent work titled Scenario. 
and how it was written. And it's up to you to decide which part of it was ordered and which part of it was chaos. Let me begin from the semblance of the beginning. It was a regular night in my house in Mumbai. I was sitting with my friends, my clique, inner clique, you know, some friends you have, you can talk dirty to them or whatever you want to them. And liquids were free flowing, not bodily liquids, but you know, the kind you take orally and they t tend to alter your state. We were delving into the realm of uh, probability and possibility. That was that time of the night when conversations start to get intense. We were actually, but that is that we were, we think it was intense, but I don't know if you guys might, because we were actually talking about hypothetical scenarios we might find ourselves in. For example, I tell my friend, by the way, my friend is a beautiful young girl, an aspiring actress, and in a long time relationship with another friend of mine who's also a part of my clique. I tell my beautiful friend this, what if your boyfriend and I were to find you in my house where you're not supposed to be, coming out of the bathroom, bang in the middle of the hall with just a towel wrapped around your head? That's not it. That's not the only shock we were to incur. Picture this, my beautiful friend who's not supposed to be in my house because it's not her house. And she's gallivanting in my house with only a towel wrapped around her head, humming a song of solitude, like, oh, I'm alone. And unbeknownst to her, from the other end of the hall, my house help, whose name is Nasser, emerges butt naked. Can you imagine that for a second, you know? Both of them shocked to see each other. I, and just as they're absorbing the ini initial shock of this naked stimulation, precisely precisely at that point of this naked catastrophe, my boyfriend, my best my friend's boyfriend and I emerge from outside and see two familiar naked people standing in my hall. Like the fuck, yeah. Our bodies in comatose are totally like, eh, hey, you know? And, and uh, shocked at the, at the entire juxtaposition. What do you even say or do if you are someone or you find someone in that scenario? Believe it or not, this was the genesis of my work, imagining naked people in my hall. From this point on, I knew I was onto something seminal. I mean, can you even think about an idea as great as that? I knew it. <laughs> it was an epiphany of sorts. And you know, I, I, I was mesmerized by these hypothetical scenarios my friends and I created. Some of them way naked, nothing. Some of them way too risque for me to even mention here. Anyway. Now came the time to write this groundbreaking, earth-shattering idea that stemmed from seeing naked people in my house. I had to approach this idea with utmost sincerity. One afternoon, I rushed to my study, turned on the computer. There it is, the blank page. Now, if you're a writer, you know the fear, e fear of the blank page. It's a real thing. It's a bit like stage fright, but you can run away. I can get away from here. If I want, I can run away, but a blank page remains a reminder. Anyway, I kept looking at the blank page and nothing was happening. So I left, my, I, I left the room enabling myself to be non-productive for creativity. This always helps, you know, go on the side, engage in some frivolous activity, mundane activity, and then come back and hope that Eureka is gonna strike. I come back to the room. There it is again, the blank page. I approach it from a different angle. I'm like, let me see if this works. Let me see if this works. Nothing was working. So, and I, the, at this point of time, the blank page was looking back at me. We were both interpreting the void. That was, that's my cue to stop. But you know this, uh, Anko y Anko Vala Piar with the blank page is a quintessential part of the writing process. It is reminiscent of those, all of us watch Bollywood, right? I love it. It is reminiscent of those old Bollywood flicks where the girl and the boy see each other for the first time and instantaneously know, yeah, this is ordered chaos. This is the ordered chaos I want in my life. Then, then, no, it's not over. Then they see each other again at a random wedding. And then they see each other again randomly, again at a marketplace. They don't exchange a word. They're still, you know, they keep looking at each other. And, but this time, their glances 
are relatively more intense, like level two of danger. Songs start to play in their head. Trees and, bag, uh, trees and branches come in the background. Time goes by. They're still at that stage where they're uh, uh, exchanging glances at random meetings kind of place. Everything is conveyed through Everything is conveyed through their eyes. They've even envisaged they're married. They've even had some reluctant sex in their head. I don't know how that happens. Well, I'll tell you. You know the kind of sex where the girl goes, Abhi nahi, and the boy says, To kab ab me aur intazar nahi kar sakta. <laughs> and then, <laughs> and then, and then, he twists her like she's a WWF wrestler. Both their hands scramble together. You know, have you seen that happen? Both their hands scramble <laughs> together more than a scrambled egg ever has. Signifying, now this is the point, this is the most important point, breaking and entering. We reach the symbolic shot. Then the two flowers come in, you know, to yeah. <laughs> you know? Uh, uh, mind you, this is all in their imagination, but suddenly, reality hits. News of the girl being betrothed to someone else reaches the boy's house. He's heartbroken, devastated. It's too late for him to do anything but sing a song, blaming everyone, the weather, relatives that don't exist, fate, destiny, e I mean everything and anyone but himself. And as he sings this song, he runs to the girl's house. But she's already getting married to someone else. It's too late. But don't forget, her eyes are singing a sad love song, which only the boy understands. But no ma shadi wadi chal rahi hai, ye sab ho raha hai. But aankhon mein in dono ki, itni saari log hain, kuch nahi pata, in dono ko. Why, I mean, why? So the m this is, a moral of the story is very important. To not stare at the blank page for too long, just long enough to get you started. I imbibe the same process in writing. I, I don't commit anything to paper till I've exchanged those uh, looks, those glances. But knowing when to commit to paper is also an extremely, extremely important part of the process, which I learned with time and the hard way. Now going back to scenario. I, I, uh, the first thing that I wrote in scenario was the climax. And I knew how my story was going to end, but that's all I knew. I said, yeah, ending aagi. Beginning to aai you know? And but I still had to write a cohesive script. Time lapse. I'm halfway into the madhouse with uh, my uh, script. I kn I, I've written some important scenes. I know the ethos, pathos, logos of my characters. I'm feeling really motivated, but so is someone else. And I'm about to find out soon. I land in Bangalore. My family lives in Bangalore. My, I land in Bangalore. My sister throws everything but the kitchen sink at me. My sister tells me she's pregnant. Okay. Before I delve deeper into the crux of the story, allow me, allow, allow me to explain the dynamics of my relationship with my sister. I was born when she was born. No, no, we're not twins. We're not twins. But when I was a little kid, I don't know how small, very small probably, some adult who was adul adulting took me to the side and said, listen, if you ask God for something and you cry, continuously cry, God answers that your prayers. And any adult who spreads this kind of fake news should be prosecuted. But <laughs> my tears made my parents pregnant, or at least that's what I believe. My prayer was answered. My sister was the result. We are three siblings, of which my sister is the youngest and the bravest, because she's the only one who got married and was now pregnant. At this point of time, I knew my sister needed me. And even if she didn't need me, I wanted to be there for I wanted to be there with her for myself. Intelligence is a polymorphous concept. So is love. You don't know how much you know or how much you can love till you're put in a greater position. My sister had an extremely difficult pregnancy. By the time she was done with it, I thought I had delivered as well. You know? The birth of my nephew changed my life, and it reflected in every aspect of it. The first thing that, when I resumed writing, the first thing that I changed 
was the climax of scenario. Something I was so damn sure about, which I had like say, yeah, I got it. It was gone. It was, I changed it. Digression is that part of life which defines the abstract. Both abstract and concrete are malleable inferences that lead us to believe there's a difference to begin with. Our life, which seems like a coincidence, is also a concurrence. It is an accident, but it had to happen. We are all synchronous beings, connected by this dissonance, whatever dissonance that may be, we're all synchronous beings connected by this. It doesn't mean if we don't know each other, we never will. Look at this, we know each other now, right? So, And it also doesn't mean if we never know each other, we never have. We're all connected, even if the world only interprets our differences. Love is the biggest ordered chaos there is. It is neither a chaos nor is it ordered. Every snowflake, now this is something that I, I, I mean, I really believe in the perfection of uh, dichotomy. Every snowflake falls in its perfect place. Patterns and disruptions are one. How do we describe the anomalies that exist? We use language, right? Everything that you're doing, you're using a textbook or language. I, I believe that language is a recent phenomena, hence not evolved enough or equipped enough to um, explain nature. It can appreciate it, but explain nature? Nature is so vast. Language is a recent phenomena. We have to evolve to that stage probably, and I don't know if it's going to happen because it's always been so ahead of us, nature. I don't know if we'll reach there. So we can explain it, but I don't know, I, we can uh, appreciate it, but I don't know if we can explain it. Have you ever wondered which heartbeat is more important? The one that follows or the one that precedes? I don't know. The consequence or the cause? What was the consequence or the cause? Silence comes when you listen, just like chaos when it's ordered. Thank you. <laughs>